Hello, and welcome to an open source live code hangout where today we will be focusing on audio plugin developments for VCB Rack, the virtual Euro Rack Studio. So, in our last episode for VCB Rack, I was able to build Rack from source. We here uh, can see the rack uh, re uh, repository on my local computer and the build was successful. We spent a lot of time last time just giving uh, some background on what uh, Euro rack is, what modular synthesis is, a little bit of the history from my very shallow understanding. Um, but I've got a lot of interest and I'm learning every time. I uh, Every day, I'm learning every day. So. Uh, modular synthesis allows us to create sound from very primitive things like oscillators and then which are just vibrating uh, objects essentially and digital in this case they can be different kinds of waveforms smooth or um, more jagged so we have what are called sine waves sawtooth waves and then we generate these sounds and pass them through other modules the idea is that you um, every module has some inputs and outputs and the common language or a common uh, thing passing through these cables is voltage and the voltage is used in different ways some voltage moves uh, oscillates at audio rate where we could hear the oscillations and some of it moves a bit slower sub audio rate so we would call those lower frequency oscillators and those voltages can be used to turn knobs so they can control other other modules and we call those control voltages and there's a particular standard in the euro rack paradigm that comes originally i think from the moog synthesizers called the volt per octave so depending on the context what kind of module it is it might have a volt per octave input so that would be usually modules that are outputting some sound frequencies and for every one volt increase you would increase an octave so it's a very easy to understand uh, relation between integers and octaves basically so you want to go up three octaves you go up three, you increase three volts pretty good uh, model in my opinion and there are some uh, prominent people who are really uh, active and promoting this modular synthesis approach to creativity and music generation in particular and there's a lot of great modules that are available uh, in the VCB rack library and the nice thing is that there's you know over 3,000 here uh, many of which 2,700 are free to use and there's a lot of those like 2,300 that are open source you can even see how they work inside uh, the reason I'm really interested in rack is uh, I'm interested in modular synthesis, but I don't really want to buy a bunch of stuff. I don't want to fill my house with a bunch of stuff. And I've mentioned before that all this stuff has to come from somewhere and that somewhere is typically around the world. And we have manufacturing uh, centers, you know, <clears throat> around the world. And uh, these are depending on rare earth metals and petroleum and not always good factory conditions. Uh, so generally, uh, this it just goes with stuff in my... Uh, general opinion I would like to have less less is more but I am interested in creativity and modular synthesis so rack 2 gives me a good opportunity <clears throat> uh, to experiment with modular synthesis well you know even on a pragmatic level just I don't have a big apartment I don't have room for more stuff uh, which is by choice and by design which kind of is a constraint I've introduced into my life uh, which actually is a liberation it's liberating to have constraints <clears throat> we'll explore more about that, how constraints can be uh, liberating, uh, probably in subsequent uh, videos where we particularly dive into some patches. And as one example, the, there's so many modules, uh, it can be really difficult to know where to start. If you install all 2,000 of them, <clears throat> boy, that can be <clears throat> almost paralyzing to say, oh, what, what should I put on there? So we'll even try to constrain our choice of the uh, modules we install. Uh, to a set of some um, what are called collections that contain modules. Uh, there's about three, uh, two main, well, 
the VCB Rat Core comes with the collection. The Surge XT is uh, the second collection, which is fully open source. And there is a, um, a third one called Befico, which they are a hardware manufacturer, but uh, they also publish their some subset of their modules here as open source on VCB Rack Library. So I would say these are ones that I would recommend in a starter uh, kit. And there's one other called Bog Audio, but you see we're already adding up 21 modules here. Uh, the Surge modules, VCB Rack Core comes with 50, so we're already at 70. And then we've got Surge XT, which is another 50, you know, so adds up quick, 100, about 120 there. And then uh, we've got, um, you know, so many other collections. There's just one other collection I would say, uh, from my personal uh, opinion, is a great one to have to start with. So now we're at 111 more. So you can see that's, you know, quite a lot of modules. Uh, the reason is not every collection has every kind of module, and there's only a few main uh, categories of modules, but uh, within each category there can be a diverse uh, thing, like this analyzer is a really important one, <clears throat> where you can see visually the spectrum of your music, and I think there was a better spectral display here, and there's only a couple of uh, module kits that come with this. Uh, spectral display. This walk is another great one uh, for introducing randomness. But here we have uh, these spectrum analyzers, which is really important when you're designing sound to be able to see it in a spectral view. And then the other view is typically the waveform view. And there, uh, the VCB core comes with uh, a stock um, oscilloscope, you basically would call that. Uh, so you don't have to go to any module collection to get an oscilloscope, luckily. But uh, unfortunately, VCB core doesn't come with uh, a spectrum analyzer. It's probably kind of a complex module to include in the core. So yes, yeah, so basically you kind of put together uh, your own kit, find the ones you like. I usually will take a collection and I'll just subscribe to the collection and get everything in there. But um, sometimes, you know, you can also just install one. You say, oh, I like this sample and hold the shift register. Uh, I will add that to mine. Uh, this is included in VCB, so I don't need to add that. So I there. All right, so that's VCB Rack. It's open source on GitHub. They have a pro version. Um, the free version is excellent. It does probably 95% of what you'd ever want to do with the VCB Rack. Uh, the pro just comes with the ability to embed that in a digital audio workstation, a DAW. It also includes like support um, VCB Rack kind of famously uh, or infamously or something. They disabled their GitHub issues and uh, so it's kind of difficult. There is a community forum, but it can be difficult to get support, but the community is very helpful. And the rationale for disabling, disabling the issues, you know, I'm sure was justified uh, to some extent. Uh, it's just kind of weird that an open source project disables the GitHub issues, but okay, it's not my <clears throat> decision to make, but Rack 2 does include su uh, professional support. So uh, I did finally get Rack 2. And you know it includes VS2 audio unit, VST audio unit, and Clap, which is a new audio uh, plugin format. Uh, I think Bitwig and uh, VS, uh, VCB are some of the earliest um, projects to support this Clap format. I think it even originated from Bitwig or from Reaper, perhaps Clap. <clears throat> Bitwig and Yuhi are uh, clever audio plugin API, so uh, it's relatively new, but we will probably start seeing it more. And it, I think, patches some issues that uh, our VST and uh, audio units are known to have. And one of which is that um, I think it's fully open source. VST Steinberg VST um, standard or specification is not fully open source there's some proprietary elements there and uh, Apple's audio unit specification I don't believe is open source um, correct me if I'm wrong there but I think this one is licensed and there's a lot of projects uh, who are starting to support clap uh, Arturio might be looking into that this is they're one of my favorite um, companies they just the stuff that Arturio does is like excellent bespoke synth is a really interesting open source project worth checking out uh, these are the makers of Reaper. Uh, I don't know if it can currently support Clap, but I think it's in the works. iPlug is a plugin framework. There's probably some other really great stuff here that I I don't know. Here's VCB though, which does support Clap. Well, Hall of DSP, I guess they're publishing their um, plugins as a Clap format as well. And 
Yeah, so Clap is just releases the MIT fully open source, which is a great thing. We just need an open source uh, plugin standard in our communities. Um, MIDI works with MIDI 2.0. That's really cool. Extensible and it should have multi year collaboration by Bitwig and Yuhi. I really like Bitwig. I'm really thinking about if I would uh, invest in their DAW because. Uh, one, my brother uses it and recommends it, but two, uh, I run Linux, and the more I can do in Linux, the better. I finally got my Linux audio <clears throat> working in real time, not without uh, issues, but uh, it's just been a long long battle, 10 years or more, that I've been trying and trying and trying to get Linux audio to work, and just frustration, dead end after dead end, <clears throat> ended up just starting to use a Mac for audio production and was very um, pr productive and it just things work there and I could focus on the music and not troubleshooting but now that I'm getting back into development and uh, I do enjoy using Linux and I'd like for Linux audio to be more stable maybe we'll see with Pipewire some finally reaching stability but I, I'm really cautious uh, skeptical uh, cautiously uh, optimistic maybe it's the right word but uh, yeah so I would maybe get to um, <clears throat> A DAW like, uh, um, well, anyway, the DAW that has first class Linux support. I do um, donate to Arturia, uh, not Arturia, but I have paid for several Arturia plugins. I think Arturia, to a certain extent, runs on Linux. Uh, but I would perhaps uh, consider getting Bitwig because Bitwig has published a native, first class native uh, supported uh, Linux version of their software. One of the only few first class DAWs that has Linux support. Reaper also has Linux support. I've purchased Reaper. So I'm, my use of open source used to be partially initially because I didn't have a lot of money to do things and I was kind of looking for free software but then I realized the value of open source and what free software means like in terms of freedoms and being able to modify the source code and distribute it and stuff like that. I really value that. Uh, but that said, I'm not a strict evangelist. Now, uh, and I'm, I've been very pragmatic in recent years. When we work with the VCB rack, I will be making open source plugins though. They will be GPL licensed, GPL three or later. Uh, so the first steps we need to do is just, how do we make a basic plugin? And I've got this book, you'll see in reverse order here because my camera is mirrored backwards. Uh, Developing virtual synthesizers with VCB rack. So we'll be using this book as a reference and it's written for VCB Rack 1. VCB Rack 2 was published maybe a year ago. And uh, nonetheless, the book seems still fairly relevant and most of the code should still work. Most of the instructions work. I had a little bit of trouble getting VCB Rack to build with the instructions from the book. But was able to get it to work yesterday. So. Now that we've got it installed and we've built it from source, we can make the Hello World plugin. So if, if I open a terminal here, and I'm gonna have, I don't have a book holder, so I'm gonna have to kind of look down, but to CD into the rack plugins. So I'm in the plug rack directory over here, plugins, and then they have a Hello World plugin, maybe. Nothing. Okay. All right. So that already doesn't work in the book. Rack doesn't include a Hello World plugin, it looks like, but whatever I put in there. Online resources of this book provide a simple Hello World book. Okay, so that's what I didn't read. There's a thing that I need to download. But let's skip over that. And I'll have to look into um, C++ support in VS Code. The book re recommends using like Eclipse or something else for uh, the editor. I'd prefer to use VS Code with make file support. So perhaps, so when I go to, there's a place in the book where you scaffold. 
Oh, okay, so we can generate SVG files with Inkscape. Let's keep an eye on chat there. And it's pretty cool, it gives you diagrams, and basically you can, in VC, uh, in Inkscape, you can put placeholders, and if you use these naming conventions for the placeholders, um, there's a script that VCV Rock will take those SVG diagrams and put inputs, outputs, and knobs in places where you've annotated those. And that's an interesting thing that the VCV Rack user interface is SVG so that you can kind of view things at different scales. Let's start programming the easy ones. So I'm in chapter six of the book. Highly recommend checking it out from your local library. My library does have a copy. I ended up buying it before I knew my library had a copy, but it's a good investment. All right. So there should be like a helper.py. Now I don't know if the helper. Is part of this plugin, uh, part of the downloads for the book. So maybe I need to download the resources for the book. So let's try that real quick. So let's look at the book here. Here's the hello world. And the thing is, I don't see the helper.py. I go to the VCBRX source code. There is a bit of Python here. There's the helper.py. That's what we're after, actually. Okay, so that's part of the um, VCBRX core. Andrew Belt's the core developer for VCBRX. So this is just rack helper pi, so I can actually no. That was correct. Alright, so essentially we invoke this with Python 3, hopefully, and do some Python 2 stuff on us. Alright. Oh I see. So wait what I see I was misreading from the book. So you CD rack plugins. And then you run the helper pie, but give it a name. My plugin. I'm going to follow the book pretty closely. All the book um, source code is here on GitHub. So I can develop this one uh, on stream without sort of like plagiarizing. I'm giving credit to the book, and we might, you know, adapt the code in any case. Uh, here's the code. It's uh, on GitHub. It's actually not open source now that I see. Unfortunately, it's not technically open source. They should license that. <clears throat> Which is a common thing, a uh, common mistake, I believe. People put co code on GitHub and think it's open and forget to license, or they don't want to license it as open source, but it's like there for reference. So it's like, I forget what the word for that is, but it's like view source or something uh, anyway i think the intention here was to create that as open source gpl code and plus it's based on gpl oh here it is there it is okay we got it general public license oh, okay so the, the base repo is not all right so we're gonna go through this interactive prompt plugin name my plugin version 2.0 so it has to start with 2 the major version 2 so that it'll be rack 2 compatible uh, if open source identifier from spdx licenses uh, no proprietary so we'll be like gpl plus brand prefix this is just an experiment so we won't really worry too much here I'll just follow the defaults, but if or when, if and when, if or when, uh, I'm able to start making my own plugins, then we'll start worrying about that stuff. Authors, MD, author email, MD, 
website empty, plugin website empty, manual website empty, sort of URL, doing URL. Yeah, cool. So you can use make, make, clean, make, dis, make, install in the my plugin directory. See my plugin. And now we can see here plugins, my plugin. It's got some source, some resources, which is empty. That'll be where we'll put our uh, user interface, I would imagine. And basically, that um, w like wizard you would say, or that helper, just walk me through creating this this JSON file, which is the entry point with all the plugin metadata. Here it comes with a make file. Do you want to install the make file tools extension for Microsoft for the mix make file language? Okay, that's what I was hoping there would be a first class support for make file in VS Code. Three million, almost four million installations. Uh, I don't think uh, Microsoft has a proprietary make file thing, does it? Hopefully, it'll just be a regular. Uh, okay. Sure, I don't know. What's it doing? Okay, so now I've got a new thing up here. I don't want that to be my top thing. I think it should be down here, perhaps. So maybe if I open the directory. My plugin. It'll look a little different. Here and then we can just focus on our source and some stuff. Okay, so I'm technically in the VCB rack repository. That is why we see the changes here. C plus plus extension pack. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. VS, uh, VS Code is fairly robust in general purpose IDE. Uh, but it doesn't come with support for everything out of the box. It's an extension based thing. Like when I mainly use a VS Code for uh, Python, I had to install the Python support, for example. But Microsoft seems to have the be the primary maintainer of like Python and C++ and perhaps Java support. I don't want to do any pre-release stuff. I'm already going to be freaking out trying to figure out how C++ works. All right, comparator, compar comparator, 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 comparator module. So you're gonna compare two values, one high, one low. I think is higher. A is higher than B. True or false? Comparator module, comparator. So we're gonna look at some the class definition. <laughs> So let's see the now rack uh, projects are consisting of two things modules and plugins I think the module uh, maybe let me see is the collection of The plugin is a, it's a collection of modules. Check something real quick. Also, there's a VCB rack.
plugin development tutorial. You have to be familiar with C++, which I'm not. This is actually my first time ever even looking at C++. Not quite, but yeah, pretty much. So we gotta figure out what our rack directory is. We created a plugin. So we create a plugin and then we create a module. Check the panel guide. Design the panel or open the existing PDF AGI or SVG file. Copy and paste it. One HP Euro rack. And let me double check what we're after here. Are we going to have knobs or anything? Maybe. DSP. All right, so we should start here. Install Inkscape. Check. And I will create a new document. Document properties, shift control D. Make sure units and display units are set to millimeters. Millimeters, millimeters. Pixels is not supported. Set the height at 128.5. And the width to desired multiple of five millimeter, 5.08. So. They didn't really work there, but. Could have done that in my brain, but I'm not so good at that. It's pretty narrow, isn't it? Okay. Let's see, 5.08, maybe times 7, 35, no, I don't know, 
Ich um die. Just want to make sure I get it right also. So let's go with this. What do you think? Design the panel. This is another thing I was talking about uh, previously. I'm not super good at math, uh, even arithmetic, and I would like to learn about DSP, and I know it's heavily mathematics-based uh, entirely, mathematics-based, but I think with levels of abstraction, math and DSP are approachable by many people. That's so I'm interested in this pure data or plug data. And if possible, I'm going to try to find a way to make rack modules with plug data and uh, compile it to C via the heavy integration, C, C++, and then hopefully I can patch it into the, uh, the rack backend. Then I can really start working with some DSP stuff. Uh, CS, C++ is not super enticing to me. I, I like these kind of visual languages. So if you're interested in generally uh, learning with, uh, experimenting with DSP, learning, <clears throat> and having a graphical patch language, you know, check out Plug Data. It's based on pure data, but it's a more modern um, user interface similar to Max MSP, open source on GitHub. And it has one core developer. Uh, it's a relatively new project, uh, but I think it's showing really good promise. And you can even make a sort of like plugging the inter GUIs with it and it can be compiled and uh, served from like hardware, like Arduino hardware. So it's got a lot of potential. It's made with juice, pure data, and it's got this compiler and it includes a lot of uh, built-in externals, although Heavy doesn't support very many, only some pure data core ones. So you, if you want to compile your project, you have to be very careful and Heavy will tell you which ones it. Uh, it'll highlight the ones it doesn't support in the patch, so you'll know. Very cool. So we've got a blank something. We're not doing anything with it. Design the panel. Uh, as if I'm using hardware, text should be readable. Do not use other people's IP. Yeah, that's cool. Don't hesitate to ask. Okay, so they do have the community forms. Uh, and the people there are really nice and helpful. So like I say, you can get support. And there's development discussions and things like that. They just disabled the GitHub issues, so it's kind of hard to track what's going on with the development of the project. And uh, there's not like an official support channel here. I think they're kind of funneling you towards the VCV Rack Pro, which I think is a good investment. Not everybody. My brother's the opposite opinion. He doesn't like some of the things that are going down down with the VCV Rack community. And I've heard some other complaints that I'm taking heed of, but I haven't found a better alternative. So there's the VCBI community. All right, so we're gonna create a panel. Let's just download this one. Yeah, thank you, because now we kind of see how it works. Save as my module.csv. And was ours called my module also? Let me see. Second hard drive, code audio B. Rack plugins, my plugin, resources, my plug, let's call this one my plug, uh, oh no, no, my module, that's right, .svg. So I can do this kind of art, circles, text, text, I can do that. I have confidence in my art skills. Very good. So close that one out without saving. So theirs is a bit narrower than I was going for. Makes sense. I was just afraid. I don't know how, how big it should be. It's the first time I even looked at that. So yeah. See, this is why they use SVG because it's scalable. And when you're zooming in and out of the VCB interface, uh, the module has to respond to that. If you're working with the physical device, you can get close and far away and reach uh, distant modules and pl plug and patch them. So it's you know natural that you would be getting close and far away. Let's, let's rename it. Oh. oh, that's right. This is one of the things that you have to convert the text to paths. It was one of the things that was mentioned there. 
that the text rendering doesn't quite work. So let's call it my ungroup it. I know a little bit about uh, Inkscape even. Cool. I would like to learn more. It's really powerful. My module. My module. Well, let's keep them aligned though. And it's like a modular synthesizer, synthesis environment. You know, you have a lot of different patches and plugs, and this is what this represents. You've got extra places to plug things. You got one extra place. Input and output. Which would be IO, not OO. But here you have two outputs. Oh man. Okay, I don't know that much about Inkscape clearly. Oh gosh. I just want to align these in a nice orderly manner. Alright, saving that. And I can just hit control S. Now we come back over here. I'll close my handy calculator because I don't need to do that now. And in our terminal, I've got the rector ectori. And we have a nice panel. And we will, we will create module. Uh, helper, helper dot pi, create module. My module. Res, my module. SVG and source a CPP module name my module. I better not because that's gonna cause some problems. One line description module, comma sensitive, case sensitive. Move. There we go. We got some CPP. Isn't that? It's pretty nice. I mean, honestly, Python is starting to look a lot like this. Cannot find plugin. I hope I pay. Well, it should include that, but, uh, there that's our workspace and the source I mean this should have gotten it though weird okay now it formatted it for me when I saved uh, all right this will create a C++ file automatically from components in the SVG file example session all right yeah to enable the module, add extern mod, del, my module name, to plug in HPP, all right. And then add that one to the... Plug in to the init function of the plugin C++, CPP. C plus plus init P. So we have the plugin instance P. Add modules here. I'll just do that there, just since that's what they told me to do. Oops. I'm trying to be have. Oh my man. I'm trying to follow instructions here. <sighs> okay, we did that. The models there. 
implementing the DISP. This is why we're all here. Everything has led to this moment. Rack modules have four basic components. As we saw, the panel guide. I didn't quite read the panel guide, but there's inputs, outputs, parameters, inputs, outputs, and lights. Parameters are the knobs that you can twiddle. Expert knob twiddlers. And lights. Blinking lights. That's the blinking lights. And so yeah, knobs have voltage val have values. They're kind of like memories. They just store a particular value. And then inputs get voltage, outputs send voltage, lights go blink. They can change uh, hue and brightness as well. It's pretty cool. This tutorial will implement a simple sine oscillator with a pitch parameter of one volt per octave pitch input sign output and a blinking light that flashes at one hertz kind of cool if it flashed no an audio rate wouldn't make sense all right so open the generated my module c plus plus there we are uh, and add the following member variables to the module class my module is a struct to the mod my module c plus plus now, structs and classes are slightly different, right? To the module class. This is the module class, I think, because there's the process member. So you just don't have class. It's a class within a struct. Maybe. Where do I add them? Just in here? Is this the like initializer? Initializing. There's the widget. Now we're going to process some D. Yes. Hey, it's already suggesting some stuff. So get the time that elapsed and get the pitch and change the pitch based on the voltage. Clamp it so it doesn't go to an extreme value. Plus or minus four volts, I think, is what it's doing there. Compute the frequency from the pitch partials. Wow, DSP module. There's going to be some good stuff in there. C4 times standard power. 2F. Accumulate the phase. Ooh, fancy. Compute the sine output. Blink the light at 1 hertz. It's like almost straight out of the tutorial it's like literally uh, plagiarizing the tutorial it's infringement infringement it copied the text verbatim it didn't cite us didn't cite its sources. All right. So we get the pitch, input, value, then ah parameter the parameter value. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just a little parameter value is between zero and one. Steps of zero, I think. Oh, no, wait, what does this mean? Starting value. This is the range and the starting value, I think. Let's see. If I hover, do I get something? Control click. Jump to definition. Oh, no, this is going to be a bit of a problem. All right. 
I might get a different IDE if I can't go to definition or I don't know how the C++ stuff works But anyway, so then we're going to add the pitch input voltage to the value, which is basically between uh, zero and one octave, starting at probably C4, mil C. And then the voltage can take us plus or minus the input, which could be minus 10 to plus 10. I don't know the input range here doesn't specify. Hmm. Uh, the default frequency is C4. Okay. So you start there, then get the power, second power of the pitch. I'm going to have troubles with this DSP stuff. This is why I was hoping to work mainly with um, plug data, but it's just as complicated there. But at least I can see where things are going and really coming from. Calculate the phase, accumulate the phase, phase plus equals frequency. I'm just sample time, so I think this is how far into the sample we are. Forty, the sample rate being like 44, one, 44,000 hertz, something like that. Well, what I can do is uh, get help G uh, from Chad GPT. What does this do? But it's wrapping. I think that was true. It was wrapping. So that's actually interesting. Comment. What does this do? Chat, help me explain. Line of code you selected from a C++ file and is performing an operation at, on a variable named phase. The line is incrementing the phase variable by the product of frequency and a sample time. Here's a breakdown. It's not quite telling me at a high level. It's telling me a very literal and superficial level. I can I, I can read that in the code, but. <clears throat> Trying to think what it's doing at a meta level. The thing is with <clears throat> VCV rack, the, DS, the process is called with every single sample, uh, which I think differs from a lot of audio plugins where they um, call it, uh, the DSP function is usually on um, sort of like a buffer, a moving buffer. <clears throat> In DSP, the phase of a signal at any given point in time can be thought of as the state of the signal at that moment. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's like phase is moving through the cycling through the full cycle. For a periodic signal like a sine wave, the phase tells you where it is in its cycle from bottom to top and then back again. The frequency of the signal determines how quickly it cycles through its phase. Makes sense. Higher frequency means this signal cycles faster, and lower frequency means it cycles slower. This is a good thing I should almost include in like a, a little helper textbook thing. DSP for me, who doesn't know math. <laughs> Hopefully other people could also enjoy that. The sample time or sample rate is the interval at which the signal is being sampled or updated. In a DSP function, it's called every sample. The sample uh, time would be the time between each call to the function, the time delta. So when you multiply the frequency by the sample time, you're calculating how much 
phase should change each time the function is called. Oh, okay, so it's basically, if you've got this much time delta in your frequency is this many cycles per second, uh, you look at that time delta, how, what fraction of a second that is, and then you figure out, whoa, how far has our phase transitioned, you know, based on the uh, speed at which we're oscillating. Hmm, all right. Now this is pretty useful. Once I give it the right context, and I barely have uh, much context about this, but uh, yeah, we got much more thorough response. Therefore, phase plus equals frequency times or example times is saying increase the phase by the amount it, of, it should have changed over one sample time given its frequency. This is a common operation in DSP, particularly in the generation of waveforms for audio synthesis. Super cool. Wow, what are some common applications of phase manipulation in digital signal processing? Crazy. This is good stuff. And it's supposed to be mainly code oriented, but now it's getting more into theory around code, which is cool too. I don't have to go to GPT-4 and I'm getting pretty good uh, theory. Digital communication as well. This all of this I think originated out of digital analog communication. So all the theory for that we're using for DSP, uh, audio DSP is based in like quite a lot of work and research. Okay, so we get the sign output by taking pi times the phase, uh, 2f. This is, I think this, what does 2f mean? C++. Plus plus. I see this a lot in this format. So it's like floating point, some kind of a floating point number because the da, but the f means float also. <clears throat> what is this? And C++ 2.f is a way to specify that a floating point number, uh, specify a floating point number, the f suffix tells the compiler that the literal number should be treated as a float type. All right. Without the f suffix, 2.0 would be treated as a double. The f suffix is used when you want to specify to use a float, which typically uses less memory than a double. Ah, okay, because memory and performance really matters when you're processing, you're running a function every cycle 44,000 times a second, potentially more 48,000, uh, depending on your sample rate. So yes, you wanna use as little memory. Okay. Situation where precision is less important than conserving memory, such as in graphics programming, or when dealing with large arrays of floating point numbers. And that's what, you know, sound is, digital sound is a huge array, 44,000, 48,000, numbers per second of the audio, right? So it's just a really big array of numbers. Crazy. And these are real-time streams of uh, numbers that are coming out of these modules. Blink the light. All right, so then we're gonna output it, multiplying it by five, so It's in the range of plus or minus five volts. All right, voltage standards. This is gonna be good reference. And this is because it's a Eurorack um, simulator emulator. It tries to model Eurorack standards as accurately as possible, but there's a problem for two reasons. There are very few actual standards in Eurorack. The only rule is that you can always find a module which breaks the rule. And there are very few differences between digital finite sample rate and analog infinite sample rate. There are a few differences, okay. Yes, so this manual has some good theory here. Voltage and standards is under the plugin development. Well, it's not super in depth, but I could add a chapter on phase of a signal. Signal phase, DSP. Ah, yeah, they just point to some other stuff. Boy, it's a lot of math and there's some to-dos. Cool. All right then, we did.
did that. Compile your plugin with make. Let's see what happens. Oh, man. Phase was not declared in this scope. That's strange because it is. Do you have to pre declare it float as pitch? Phases up here. So that's what I was curious about. Where? Class module. See, I was looking for this. Module class is likely to find in the plugin HPP. Oh, okay. Oh. See, this is where I'm just going to be at a loss with a lot of this stuff. I just don't know how C works. The difference between a struct and a class. The instructions assume something that, that doesn't even exist. Module class is not here. There's my module. Uh, but that clearly didn't work. There's process. The struct. I could try adding them there. Seems weird. But okay, let's just try copy and pasting until I figure it out. Trucks are sort of like classes. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it worked. It did work. Um, you can generate a distributable plugin with make dist. Wow. You can automatically install the plugin package and rack user for it with make install. Yeah. Whoa. It's in my actual rack. Plugins. Here's our patch that we made yesterday on stream. This was fun. Let's just see. There it is, my module. It's got a blinking light. Wow, beautiful. And these, I mean, their, their default aesthetics are nice. <laughs> All I had to do was make a gray background and some circles. Wow. <laughs> I like that. That's a good uh, success. Only one hour. It took only one hour. And some help from ChatGPT and we're just actually co in this session. And a nice tutorial from the VCV React devs. So yeah, we're able to make it through the tutorial. The book is good. I just thought there would be a more brief and succinct uh, tutorial that'd be easier to read on stream. And uh, there's more uh, exploring to do in the future. It's uh, been a good session. 
So yeah, thanks for stopping by this live code hangout. And uh, if you're interested in this kind of DSP stuff, uh, let me know in the YouTube comments, for example, because uh, I'm kind of on the cusp in the series of like determining what I should do, where I should focus, where more Python and Django work, or is there interest in um, audio and DSP and particular modular synthesis? I've kept my modular synthesis and music creation kind of separate from my coding endeavors, but this might be an opportunity to sort of kind of converge the two interests. Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts and if you got any projects or recommendations that I should check out. Okay, well, I hope you're doing well and have a great day. See you around.